Welcome to the True Sports Physical Therapy Podcast. I'm joined again by Alex Jett, Dr. Alex Jett, who has just an outstanding background with elite throwers. Um, let's just sum up kind of how you got to here for those of you, for those out there who maybe have not heard from you yet, um, how you got to where you are today, career-wise, and then we're going to dive right into shoulders and talk about some of the myths, some of the facts, how you diagnose, and how you take them all the way through back onto the mound. We'll make it specific to pitchers. Yeah. So, Alex Jett, tell us about your career. Yeah, so originally I was a strength coach. That was pretty much the bread and butter of what I was doing. Um, and I had stints at the Division One level and then in professional baseball with the Kansas City Royals. And it was during my time with Kansas City um, when I was just around some really, really smart people on the sports medicine staff that are really good at what they do. Um, I, I really wanted to just take my knowledge and take what I was able to do with athletes on the sports med side, just take it to another level. Um, some personal um, some personal situations went into that my decision to walk away from that job and pursue PT. Um, but I grinded through PT school, and I, I knew that I was either A, going to go back to baseball, or B, take a job like this. Mm -hmm. But athletes and ortho and, and that, I mean, that was definitely my, like there was no question um, that that was going to be the career path I would choose. Well, speaking as the owner of True Sports PT, I'm thrilled you did that because you've been unbelievable working here um, in Frederick one-on-one -on -one with athletes every single time, 45 minutes, and you have really developed a serious following, understandably, in the baseball world. So I want to get some quick hitters to really put together some advice and some really guiding outlook to sports PTs, how they should address the shoulder in the high level pitcher. So high level pitcher comes in to see you. His shoulder has been bothering him. What are the first few questions you're asking him upon evaluation? So again, it really depends on their age, their level. So we're, we're going to go high level for, for the sake of this, for the sake of this case. I want to know when did it start? I want you to tell me where, like literally point where is it a pinpoint with one finger? Is it like a broad base area? So we got when, where, how long has this been going on? Um, what's your workload been since? I really dive into their subjective. I need to know as much as I possibly can because I've learned that the more information I get there, mm -hmm. especially with somebody that's high level and in tune with their body, the less time I have to spend getting all my objective stuff. Now, I still make sure I rule out some other things. Obviously, you have to make sure you're, you're covering your bases, but if I can really dive into their subjective and they can get up and kind of show me, like, hey, where, like, show me the phase of throwing. Where is this getting you? Is it when you're in layback? Is it when you the ball leaves your hand? Like, show me. That gives me a lot of information, and I just kind of dive in, because mm -hmm. um, then at that point you've you know you, you've seen enough of them, you have some differentials in your head, and then you just start working backwards. So, I love that. Yeah. I, I love that. So, why do you care whether it's pinpoint, whether it's diffuse? Yeah, for me, if there's a pinpoint issue, if they can put one finger on it. Something structural in my mind. Some there's something structural that may be potentially causing that pain. I also need to know the quality of pain. But if they can usually put one finger on it, there's something usually under that finger that's causing the issue. If it's that more broad-based, diffuse stuff, I'm not leaning as much towards like, hey, this is a specific structure. It could be just dumb, like general muscle pain, yeah. or you know, it, it could be something else. But I'm, I'm just, it's just going to kind of like dictate the train or, or where I put most of my stock to start at least. Yeah, um, absolutely. I loved what you said about, and you're going to hear this on the pod so much. You want a list of what could this possibly be, right? And so when you look at a joint, you look at a shoulder, what are the things that could possibly be causing that pain? And now let's start crossing them off with every single question that comes out of your mouth, right? Where does it hurt? That can absolutely be a differential. How does it hurt? Can absolutely color it. What could possibly be wrong with the shoulder? We know it's cuff. We know it's labrum. We know maybe it's neck. Maybe you're going to tease out weakness, tightness, and just keep it simple. But you got to walk in with that list and just don't waste the time with what? What do you think is a big waste of time? That has been the biggest thing I've changed. And again, you don't know any better when you come out of school, but it's just like I'm doing all my active range of motion, all my passive range of motion. Then I get out the goni, and then I do my strength test, and then I do my special test. And it's like, they're great. You're going to get a pile of information, but you got 45 minutes, yep. and you may have just wasted 20 of them yep. if nothing was pertinent that you did. So again, that's why I dive in. I really dive into their subjective because now I am like going to my, my questions are very specific. My objective is even going to be more specific because mm -hmm. now I have a pretty good idea of what's probably going on. And Love if something's it. off with my objective stuff, then I back up and I just start 
I, th- I ask him more questions. Mm-hmm. All right, did you say this started hurting with that or whatever it may be? Mm-hmm. Um, but the more information I get from them, then that just kind of helps me. And then I can just start getting pretty specific with some things. So the biggest thing is getting rid of a lot of fluff yeah. and getting extreme right away. And then that's only going to help me with my like diagnosis, prognosis, whatever, home exercise stuff. Like it just, it just makes things much easier. Yeah. Great point. Um, it's also, it also develops that rapport with, with your pitcher, with your athlete. They know you care because you are grilling them with questions. Um, you know, if I had a nickel for every time I heard an athlete tell me that they've walked into a surgeon's examination room and he's like, okay, move here, move here, move here. Here's what's wrong with you. Uh, take this or go get this. Like, because they don't take the time to develop that relationship, that's another thing that you're doing. Everything that comes out of your mouth, there should be a reason for it. And I, I think that's exactly what you're describing. So at what point would you tell the listening audience to say, you have to include this in your evaluation that's not shoulder specific. I guess to, to ask it better, what else are you looking at outside of their shoulder once you get into the objective? Definitely I'm gonna clear above and below. Neck, T spine's a big one. I'll even break out an SFMA, just like a tier one. Hey, like mm-hmm. what are your I mean and I take them through like all the neck stuff and then their quad their shoulder quadrants and um everything, their squat, their single leg stance. So if, if I'm looking for more broad things to treat, maybe the shoulder, maybe the pain's presenting itself at his shoulder, but the shoulder kind of checks out, then I'm just going to start looking at bigger picture stuff. I love that because I, we love the, as sports PTs, we love the idea of treating this entire athlete. Yeah. I would say, correct me if I'm wrong, don't look at their hip until you look at their shoulder. They're there for their shoulder. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy to me when I, when I see athletes come in and they're like, yeah, I was told my shoulder's bothering me because of my contralateral hip. No, okay. Yeah. I mean, listen, maybe, but you also might have a slap there. So like, let's, <laughs> yeah. let's figure that out. Exactly. It's a shoulder until like Eric Mara says the quad until it's not the quad. It's, it's your shoulder until I think it's not your shoulder. I love it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And that's, that's a great, that's a great idea. Okay. So within that evaluation, 45 minutes, I think is a luxury. Some places give you an hour. So let's say you had an hour. You're looking at, you have an awesome subjective. Where does it hurt? How does it hurt? When does it hurt? Um, what does it feel like? Then you move in, you said, you're going to ask about the neck, you're going to clear the neck, you're going to look at the T-spine, then maybe you're looking through the hip, SFMA. Then what are you doing? So now I'm, I'm trying to find your pain, okay. like your pain. Yep. Whatever, you know, something I may do, it may hurt. I want the pain that brought you through the door. I'm trying to find it. Yeah. If I can find it, then we're like, we're cooking a little bit. Yeah. Um, and again, they show me that through their, or they tell me that through their subjective and they show me, because I'm like, get up and show me. Mm-hmm. Where does this bother you? Um, I'll say a lot of times there's a lot of anterior shoulder pain sure. if it's in the shoulder. Yep. So how much in my mind, I'm like, all right, well, there's maybe a laxity issue. If there's a laxity issue, what structure could be involved? Probably going to be a labrum. Mm-hmm. Probably. Mm-hmm. Start doing my tests to get specific with the labrum. If that checks out, I'm like, okay, what else could it be? Then I'll, I, as I'm there on the table, I'm asking them questions. They don't know it, but I'm like diving deeper as I'm playing with their arm. Um, <laughs> You know, but but that anterior instability, we know that a high level guy, especially those guys that are ninety plus, their layback and their external it's amount awesome. of external rotation is ridiculous. Yeah, so it's awesome. You know. Okay, so what are your go to tests? Because there are a lot of trash tests. Yeah. So what are your go to tests when you're looking at a labrum? The the for I, I all, almost always start with apprehension relocation tests because they're almost almost always going to have some laxity anteriorly. Yep. Um, and as far as labor, it's, it can be as simple as just like a speeds. Um, I'll do like a, like a crank to like a grind, like a load and shift type thing. I'm trying to like jam that humeral head into the faucet and I'm like grinding on it. It's almost like a scours. Yep. I kind of break into a scours through in the shoulder. I'm usually going to catch it there um, with the amount of pressure I'm, I'm driving into the faucet as well as now I'm playing. I got my other hand and I'm just like driving that thing like posteriorly. And mm-hmm. I'm driving in all directions to try and stress that thing as much as I can. Yeah. That's usually going to catch it. So I love that. Um, I think it's also... We talk a lot about the difference between treating gen pop um, and treating high level sports. One of the things that I always say is like when I go to the weight rack and I'm gra- grabbing something for my pro NFL guys, even, even baseball guys, I'm always gonna grab like 20 pounds heavier than I think, right? That's one thing. The other thing is level of force and manipulation. Oh, yeah. These guys' shoulders are used to going through insane ranges of motion. You better stress it with your big boy muscles to see if you can reproduce that pain. So yeah. I think that's a good point. Yeah, if you can't find it, then you're just kind of like, you don't know what to tell them. What are you gonna tell them? 
Like, what's wrong with my shoulder? Go back um, to the doctor. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, you know, you, you got to find a way. Yeah. If, I, if, if for some reason I don't find it on the table, then I'm taking you out to the floor. Like, I'm telling you, I'm going to find it. Love it. I'm going to stretch. Okay, what are you doing out the there? Strength. It, it depends. If I don't find it, 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 it goes back to the position they showed me, mm -hmm. right? That bothers it. So I'm going to stick you in that position. And I'm going to stress it either manually or I'll hook up bands. That goes back to being like having that strength piece. I can kind of put you in positions and apply vector, multi-vector, whatever it may be to, to get you in a position where I'm probably going to find it. You ever put a baseball it, in their hand? All the time. Weighted ball, baseball, all, all the time. Um, and, if it, and if I can kind of find it, okay, then I'm like, I'm just keep, it's constant. I'm just diving deeper yeah. than your subjective. It's like, well, how, how severe is this? Like, how much has this really limited you? Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, I kind of feel it when I throw, but it's not too bad. It's like, okay, well, then maybe we caught something before it actually started. Yeah. So, but in my mind, if I can stress you to a certain level and you, and I can't reproduce it, then I'm wondering like, well, how severe is this to you? And then there I am again, diving into your subjective with like even more stuff. Yeah. And if I find it, then bang, then I know exactly then what to go easy. at. It's yeah. easy. Okay. So, um, quick clinical pearl there would be a lot of these guys don't feel it till inning six, seven, you know, or pitch 85, yeah. 90. So how are you going to mimic their fatigue? You know, they walk in, they're fresh. Let's see what happens when we fatigue them out with a band. So I think that's one thing that um, is worthwhile that I've learned kind of over the years. The other thing would be um, how do they do, like if it's not labor and we're thinking cuff or soft tissue, um, well, let me leave it to you. How do you get to that? What, what makes you start thinking, nah, this is a cuff? Yeah. If you're strong, right? If, I, if, I, if I'm like tugging on your joint and like grind, like yeah. literally scouring your joint and there's really no pain there, I'm like, okay, labor probably checks out. If you're painful with just active motion or resist, and if I'm doing like my manual isos on you and there's pain there, then I'm kind of leaning more towards cuff because something, anytime you contract a muscle, it hurts. So yeah. now I'm like, okay, something, now it's just like, well, where is it? Is it more back side, or front side? If I close down your joint, like if I stretch you, if I if I close it down, um, front versus back, does that bother? Is mm -hmm. it pat? You know, now I'm trying. Like, is it contractile or not? Really, is what I'm going at. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. Do you care whether it's their labrum or their cuff? As far as prognosis, yes. Okay. As far as what I'm going to do for treatment, mm, so yeah. You know, because I'll definitely I'll put more stock in certain things if it's one versus the other. Um, but definitely, what for are those? What? If it, so for labrum, yep. it goes back to where are we at in the season, mm -hmm. right? Um, what's your workload been like? All, the, all those questions. But now I'm thinking more like, well, you know, let's say you have it's, – it's September right now. So let's say you have about three weeks left in the season. Mm -hmm. All right, we're we just going to buckle up and go. We're going to do a pile of stability work, a pile of positional tolerance work, a lot of heavy manual isometrics to just get you through the season and then really dive into this. Mm -hmm. Or is it February? Mm -hmm. And you have eight, nine months to go. Now and that changes pitches. things. Yeah. So it's like, well, if I really think labor is involved, then I'm probably like, well, we need to get an MRI and kind of figure things out. Okay. Um, because so if, it, if, it, if it changes the type of player you are, now we need to like dive into some imaging and really kind of figure out what's going on. Cuff, um, I'm starting with ISOs pretty much outside of your pain range. Again, heavy ISOs um, it's a, that they can tolerate um, outside of their painful range. And their prognosis is going to be much better if, it, if that's if that gets them kind of turning a corner quicker mm -hmm. than a labrum if, which if it's a cuff and not a labrum they will turn that corner quicker now i'm just diving into a pile of strength stuff whether that's whatever mode i use yeah um yeah okay so i, I think that's great clarification when do you say we got we got to get imaging yeah so for me if i suspect something structurally um and it's like day one anything i do is lighten you up on the table you tell the big one for me is if I see you, th I just had this happen. I, I was watching a kid throw a pen, never seen him throw before. He's frustrated. His slot is down. Like he's dropping a, he's just visibly like his slot. He has a low slot, but it doesn't look natural. Mm -hmm. Talking to dad on the side, his velo's down like eight miles an hour. I'm like, something's off here. Yeah. Just literally broke out and broke into a shoulder screen. Yeah. Send him to get an MRI because everything I did lit him up. Mm -hmm. And he's young and his volume's through the roof. It's yeah. just all the arrows are pointing to like something structurally is kind of off here. And you get that clinical feeling, like that gut feeling when you see, a, you know, enough where you kind of like, I don't want to really treat and wait for this. I yeah. want to get you somewhere now, continue to treat, but you need to go somewhere now. That, I mean, that red flag you mentioned. You just watch that velo like fall off a cliff. That's the one, yeah. You know, that's, that's a great move that, hey, something's up, something big's up, probably MRI is worthwhile because it happens like so acutely. So I, th I think that's gold. Um, give me 
one, two, three things that coming out of that evaluation, you want your athlete to know? What, what's that education piece? Yep. I flat out tell them what I think may be going on. Okay. All right. I, you, I've made the mistake in the past being young. I think it's this. Well, now they're going to hold you to that. Yeah. Right? Um, now it's like, you know, I think it's potentially this structure that does this for your shoulder. Mm-hmm. Potentially. And I yeah. like say it again, potentially. Yeah. Right. Some of the tests I've done. Like, you know, some of the manual things I've done on you, some of the things you're telling me, some of the things I'm seeing are kind yeah. of pointing at this. Mm-hmm. I think if we get an MRI, it's either going to tell us that's what it is or that's what it is not. And we just kind of wait and play that game. And in the meantime, we do some stuff that gets you hopefully feeling better, yeah. maybe turn a corner. But I I want them to know potentially what I think it potentially could be, mm-hmm. what I want you to do in the meantime, what I think you should do with your sport. Because at the end of the day, they, they you'll talk until you're blue in the face, give them the best instructions in the world. All they care about is, uh, so can I pitch this weekend? Exactly. Or yep. can I pitch tonight? Like they don't know. That. So I tell them like, hey, this is what I think you should do as far as your actual sport, whether yeah. it's shut it down, give it a shot, whatever. Image, no image, what do you do for your sport? What are you going to do at home? And then potentially how long this may or may not take if one way or the other. Mm-hmm. If the MRI shows this or if it shows this. Spell it out. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that. You, gotta, that, you, gotta be, you just got to hit them between the eyes because if you try and people just want real, good or bad, Right. So you just, it's pretty easy for me to just kind of like, Hey, here we go. Like, this is what I think we got going on. What do you use to teach them? Do you, are you showing them on posters? Are you showing them me. on skeletons? Are you showing them on your shoulder? What are you doing? But yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll use my shoulder. I'll use somebody's like their shoulder, mm-hmm. their uh, non-involved shoulder. I'll pull up a image on my phone, just a, like a skeleton on my phone. Here's this, here's what I'm talking about. Here's what it does. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I educate them as much as I can. But the big thing for me is I want them to know, I want them to feel comfortable that I'm making the right decision for them. Yeah. That, that's the big thing because it goes back to what you, what we've talked about a little bit is like, for me, you, you just, you get, you meet so many different people, so many different personalities. You don't necessarily, you can't dive into that and like kind of really understand what, understand what gets them ticking day one. You just mm-hmm. don't. Mm-hmm. But if you're just real yeah. and you just kind of tell them what they need to hear. Yeah. That starts it. Yeah. And then the more you're with them or whatnot, then it kind of builds that relationship and then it just opens up everything. Boom. That's that like that relationship yeah. piece. That's what it's about. Maybe you got it wrong on your diagnosis. If you have a relationship, it doesn't matter because they know that, that you care about them and that you're going to do whatever it takes to get them right. I think there's so much more there to peel apart. I think that is an awesome start to a subjective on a shoulder yeah. of how do you get that information? It's the beginnings of a really good objective. I'd say that's a good objective. I can't, I really I can't remember the last time I used a goni. Uh, you know, like it, and it's not because oh I've been just doing this for so long. It's that it, does that matter, right? You, it, that education education piece. How quickly can you come up with a theory as to what's going on with their shoulder? Um, how can you prove that theory? to them or a hypothesis how can you prove that hypothesis to them one way or another and then how well can you get them to be eager to come back for visit two not because it helps the business but because that's what they're definitely going to need to get better right Um, and i think you you really did a great job of hitting on all those things young sports pts older sports pts that want to get better at shoulder and cuff and labrum rehabilitation, differential diagnoses, where do they find Alex Jet? Um, so I have a website, agprst.weebly.com. I actually wrote an arm care ebook, has another yeah. little project. Um, that can be found on my website. It's it's um it's called Periodized Arm Care for the Overhead Athlete. And that goes back to my strength stuff. It's like an actual periodized progressed program because especially for pitchers, man, arm care is just so just like, what do you do? Oh, I got my J bands and I do yeah. some of this. I'm like, okay, dude. That's what why I wrote it because I'm just like this is garbage. So across the board, that. anybody can it, it's it could be in season, out of season, whatever. It's just like a structured, safe program. But anyways, on um, your website, on my website, yeah. Love it. And then my Instagram is is prst underscore pt. I have a Twitter that I'm not as active on, but I get on every once in a while. Same handle prst underscore pt. Um, but yeah, man, like the the shoulder, it's. Where are you treating? Where do you want athletes to, to find you? True sport, yeah, True Sports Physical Therapy. We're located in Frederick, Maryland at Mad Fitness. Um, also, I work with Dustin Peace at Peace Baseball Professionals. That's also in Frederick. You can um, easily look up the addresses online. And so. that's, that, you know, that's a beautiful, beautiful symbiosis of strength 
and performance mm-hmm. and and it's just like speaks to how well you're able to live in, in both realms so yeah peace peace baseball is really a must to check out yeah absolutely absolutely um so it's awesome alex thanks so much for your time thanks for the education there's so much more that we're going to get to we want to hear from you we want to hear what you want to hear what you loved about this pod what you didn't necessarily love about the pod totally fine with that what you hated you just wish i would sit up straight more or whatever share it pod at truesportspt.com we're here for you we look forward to hearing from you thanks alex absolutely man thank you appreciate you